Hello everyone, welcome to KJB Believers. Good to, uh, good to see you guys here, and today we're going to be doing a Bible study here on the topic of suffering, alright? How should we suffer for Christ? What is the measure that we should suffer for? And we're going to see some examples in the Bible of one man, specifically one man, the Apostle Paul, who went through a Christian suffering, alright? Now, one thing you need to realize is that the Apostle Paul... He is the pattern of all long suffering. We're going to see that uh, what the Bible says on that. So, basically, we should follow Paul as Paul follows Christ. All right, that's what also Paul said. So, Christian doctrine today, for us today in this church age dispensation, doctrine alone is Romans to Philemon. Now, am I saying you can't find Christian doctrine in John or Hebrews? No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this: the cent the central part of all Christian doctrine. Is based on the teachings of Paul. All right, and we're going to use that, and we're going to see that here. Okay, and of course, we're also going to look at the other epistles as well. So I cannot stress enough why Paul is is very important, because now a lot of people out there don't like Paul. They don't like you know his teachings, and they don't like what he's done, etc. And we're going to see why, and, and some of the stuff that he went through. Paul was supposed to go through a lot of suffering, and we're going to see that here in a bit. We're going to see that here in a bit. Let's turn in our Bibles here to Acts, Acts chapter 9, verse 16. So here's uh, the story of Paul. You know, he's, he's walking through Damascus, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he gets saved by the power of God. So there's Jesus talking to him, saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? You know, ain't that funny whenever the Lord Jesus appears? You don't even, it's like, you know who he is, but you still need to ask a question of who he is. It's like, God shows up and like, oh, who are you, God? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's you. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the same thing if you saw in Daniel chapter three, I think it is, where Nebuchadnezzar saw a son of God right there, even though he didn't know who he was. It's like the mere presence of Lona God tells you, oh, that's him. You know, that's Jesus. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's something to keep in mind there. But let's look at here. Notice what Jesus ends up telling him, telling the Apostle Paul. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. <laughs> Now, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ attributed to Paul. He told Paul, listen, you're going to suffer a lot for my namesake. Okay. <laughs> now, most of y'all probably be saying, hey, you know, okay, that's only for the Apostle Paul, right? Well, we're going to see about that in a bit. We're going to see. All right. So, it's without a doubt, the Apostle Paul suffered a lot. If you read from Acts... All the way through the book of Acts, he gets bitten, he gets shipwrecked, you know, he gets stoned out of Lystria, then, you know, he gets killed, and, and a lot of stuff has happened to him, man. I mean, he suffered a lot, more than most Christians suffer today. You see, because when a Christian today, let's say someone calls him a mean name or something, they all, all of a sudden get into fit and say, oh, you're persecuting me, beep, beep, beep. you know, that's not, that's not persecution. This is persecution. You getting whipped, getting thrown in jail, <laughs> getting killed, you know, the... That's that's straight up persecution. I mean, we Christians in America have it easy, have it easy today. We think just because someone, you know, gives us the middle finger, you know, we, we think, oh, we're getting persecuted. Uh, no, buddy. No, that's not persecution. That's not even close. All right. So without a doubt, the Apostle Paul suffered a lot. And we're going to see here that the Apostle Paul confirms this in Second Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, you know, notice what the Bible says. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in laborers more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft, which is often. So, and he even says of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, the night and day I've been in the deep. 
and journeyings often in perils of waters and perils of robbers and perils of mine own countrymen and perils of by heathen and perils in the city and perils in the wilderness. So you see here, and even in weakness and weariness and painfulness and watchings often and hunger and thirst and fastings, you see, we have not gone through persecution, my friend. Most Christians today have it so easy. We have it so easy because this is what the Apostle Paul did. This is what persecution is. This is what persecution looks like. If you want to see a list of what persecution is, check this out. 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 23, all the way at, I guess, um, I guess to verse 27. All right, so this is your list of persecutions. Are you meeting, the, if you're not meeting this criteria, then my friend, it's nothing. Okay, and sadly today we have so many Christians who are very, very soft. Very, very soft when it comes to the gospel's sake also. <laughs> and I, I, I know a, a friend of mine who who maybe not goes to this extent, but he even admitted to me, hey, you know, sometimes they, they blow weed smoke in your face or sometimes they pour beer down. And yeah, that's pretty bad. They they, they like pour, pour your face down with beer, you know, when you're street preaching, you know, and sometimes they do that. And, and yeah, that is pretty bad. But at the same time, that is not this. That's nothing. And that's nothing compared to what the Apostle Paul went through. All right. So, but you know what? At the very end of the day, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us an opportunity to preach for him and also to suffer for him. We're going to see that also in a bit. But this is what Paul went through, okay? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, well, that's just Paul, right? That's just Paul. You know, we don't, we don't, we, no Christian needs to go through this, right? Let's see. First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 16. <laughs> Notice what the Bible says. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for what? A pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Notice. He is a pattern of long suffering. The, the Apostle Paul is our apostle. He's the pattern of long suffering. So if you want to find out how you should suffer, well, you got to look at, look to Paul. And you might say, well, that's a bit too extreme. That's a bit too too extreme. Well, no, it's not. It's not that extreme in the eyes of God. It's not. Maybe to you it is. Maybe if you're not used to Scripture and what the Bible says. <laughs> but here's the thing. The Bible is very clear. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, let me ask you this question. If this is not happening to you, then are you living godly? That's something you got to keep in mind. Are you living godly? Now, this, this same question can apply to me because this has never happened to me. So maybe I'm not doing enough for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know, because what most Christians are like, they think, oh, just, you know, if you're out there in the street, street preaching, that's too much. That's way too much. You shouldn't be doing that and so forth. A lot of Christians are like that. Lukewarm. So we're going to see here in a bit. We're going to see in Romans. We're going to see Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Verse 17 and 18. Notice, this, the sufferings that we're going to experience in this world, with the list that I just went through with the Apostle Paul, which is the uh, same applied to us, that's nothing compared to what we will get in glory. Notice what the Bible says in Romans 8, 17. If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we uh, that we may also be glorified together. You know, so it's all about suffering. This Christian life is all about suffering. And I pre and some time ago, I did a study on uh, heavenly inheritance versus millennial inheritance. I highly recommend you watch that because our our millennial inheritance is tied to this. There's an if, a condition. If so be that we suffer with him. All right, verse 18. Notice, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see, it's not it's not worthy. Like the stuff that that we're supposed to suffer, not even suffering now, but the stuff that we're supposed to suffer, whipping, stonings, etc., the stuff that's supposed to happen to Christians is nothing compared to the glory that we shall be revealed. You know, it's nothing. And even the stuff that we go through today, you know, people, you know, may call us mean names or whatever. And again, it doesn't meet, meet the criteria of in Second Corinthians. But at the same time, that's still a form of persecution in a sense. Maybe not as extreme as Paul's 
But guess what? When the Bible speaks of persecution, that's what it usually means, biblically speaking, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. That's what it usually means. That is the criteria where you get whipped, where you get uh, beaten, where you, where you get persecuted. That's what persecution is. We're not living in the in persecution. A lot of Christian or Christians are, are big babies. Some Christians out there are saying that we're in the tribulation already. Uh, no, we're not. Because in the tribulation, what, uh, what will happen is the criteria in 2 Corinthians 11 that we just read, and even worse, we're not in the tribulation already. We're not we're not getting persecuted to that extent where we're getting whipped and, and stoned and and persecuted like that. And that's that's not happening now, you know, so that's something you got to keep in mind. But the Bible says, verse 18, for I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall re be revealed in us. This is not worthy. The stuff that you will go through in your life. Whether it be something as small as someone cursing at you or blowing a smoke in your face, whatever, mocking you, ridiculing you. It's not worthy compared to the glory <clears throat> that is to come. Amen. That's not worthy. All right. That's that's just enough right there to to make you realize, wow, you know, God truly loves us this, despite us. Philippians. Let me go to Philippians. 129. I think it's 129 verse and verse 30. So the Bible says, For unto you it is given in behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Notice, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Not only to believe on him, not only to get saved, but after you get saved, you should do what? Suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here, to be in me. Notice, he's comparing it to the same conflict that he that he went through. The same conflict. He's saying, hey, do the same. That's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I want you to be a radical for Jesus Christ. I want you to be to be uh, upspoken. I want you to be bold. I want you to go preach the gospel. I want you to tell it to everyone. Make their ears ring of the gospel of Christ. That's what Paul is saying here. Now, he's not saying here, uh, but to also suffer for his sake in the sense of, okay, now you got to go make yourself suffer. No, he's saying, listen, go be a full blown radical for Christ so that suffering, so that suffering will end up happening. <laughs> you know, persecution will end up happening. All right. That's something that we should be doing. You know, we should be out there street preaching. We should be out there passing out tracks. We should be out there uh, sharing the gospel with other people as much as possible. Because here's the thing, my friend, you don't know when the rapture is going to happen. As we just read previously, the glory that is to come is nothing, nothing compared to what's going to happen. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, the sufferings that's, that happens to us is nothing compared to the glory that's to come. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's a joke. You think you're going to the, through a rough time right now? Just you wait till you get to heaven. It's not that rough. You may shed a few tears here and there. You may lose a loved one here and there. But that's nothing. It's nothing but a dash. Your life is nothing but a dash. A start day and an, and, and, and an end date. That's, that's, your, that's, that's what will be on your tombstone. In your tombstone, you have beginning date, born here, end date, born here. What well, matters that little dash? Your life is just a dash, my friend. It's not that much. It really isn't. What are you willing to do for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you going to suffer for his sake? Or, or are you not? Now it is tough. I will tell you that you will you will be persecuted, but at the same time you will be doing the will of the Father. You'll be doing His will to live for Him. To do the work uh, the work of the ministry. That's what the Bible says. We're, we've been we've been reconciled and given given the ministry of reconciliation. That's also what the Bible says. That's ours. We should be suffering for Christ in every way possible. Not only in street preaching, not only in passing out tracks, but also in your daily life. You know, what do you watch? What are you watching? Is what are you watch? Is what you're watching on TV pleasing to God? If it's not, turn it off. Turn it off. Shut it off. Make sure to to surround yourself with godly things, things of the Lord, things things that will edify your spirit. Amen. That's something you gotta keep in mind as well. All right. So that's uh, Philippians uh, one twenty nine. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 
let's see, First Peter. First Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 21. Notice what the Bible says. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ, notice, also suffered for us, leaving us on what? Example that ye should follow in his steps. Notice, you want to know how Christ suffered? He was whipped, my friend. He was mocked. He was spit upon for your sins. All right? And even more than that, he, he was suffocated on the cross of Calvary. And not only that, but he suffered to the point <laughs> where, where the sins of all mankind was laid upon him, which is a type of suffering that you and I will never even comprehend until we get to glory, I guess. Then you know, the Lord will show us what he really went through. Because we can't understand what Jesus Christ did for us. Now we understand that he died, buried, and rose again. But we can't understand the gravity of that situation. For once once in all of eternity, through all of eternity, past and future, one time in history, the fellowship between Christ and the Father was broken. We will never understand that. That's something that's hard for us to comprehend. Because Jesus Christ is God. It's hard. But this is what he suffered for us. Notice. Leaving us an example. The, the intense suffering that the Lord Jesus Christ went through is an example. That what we should follow in his steps. Now I know a lot of Christians are like, well, I don't know. I don't think so. God wants us to be, you know, God just wants us. He doesn't want our works, right? He doesn't, he doesn't want, you know, what we can offer him. He just, he just wants us. He just wants us to love him. That's it. Love him and live our lives. That's what God wants, right? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example. Do you appreciate what Jesus Christ did for you? Well, you may be saved, but if you're not following in his steps, and let me tell you something, you don't appreciate that much. Now, I'm not saying you're not saved, but what I'm saying is that if you're not suffering for Christ, you don't appreciate, don't tell me you appreciate his sacrifice. You don't. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. Why? Because you don't appreciate what he did for you. You're not willing to follow in his steps. Again, you may be saved and you may you may have trusted in the blood of Christ for your salvation, but that doesn't mean that you are appreciating it honestly by following in his steps. Notice, this is what he did. When he was crucified, this is what he did. Notice, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. You see, because a lot of people, when they get persecuted, they start man, they're going, man, I can't believe this. This this fool did this and that and they start cursing and stuff. Man, I can't believe he pulled the middle finger on me and stuff. Oh, man, you know, they get, you know, they get angry and then they start cursing. And, you know, some Christians end up giving up, giving up. They get discouraged. Man, I can't believe that this woman said this to me and I tried to share Christ with her and so forth. And she said this and oh, man, you know, this woman is this. This woman is that. Have you found yourself doing that? Have you found yourself talking uh, talking evil on those who have rejected you? That's something you got to keep in mind. This is what he did. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. And this is when he suffered now. Verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, what? Reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Notice. Notice, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Even when they were reviling him, he did not revile back. That is how we should suffer. That is the pinnacle of true suffering. When you went through that dark time where other people turned on you, did you turn on them back or no? Everyone has gone through that dark time, dark time <laughs> where sometimes even your friends might have turned on you. Did you turn again back? Did you revile back? That's something you got to think about for yourself. Pray about it. <laughs> when he suffered, he threatened not. Now, now this is just according to me. I know if I was in the flesh and, and I was being hung on the cross, I, I probably would threaten. I'll be honest with you. Because that's my flesh speaking. But to be honest, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Because he did not. Neither should I. Amen. This is something that we should be doing, folks. We should be suffering for Christ. We should be living for Him. Amen. 
If you truly, that is, if you truly appreciate his sacrifice on the cross. You know what's the best way to tell God you love him? It's not with mere words, but also in following in his, in his steps to suffer for him. That's what the Bible says. All right, then in 2 Timothy, let's turn here to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Uh, I think it was chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 10. Uh, this is the Apostle Paul speaking here. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and peace. You see, this is Paul's doctrine. All right? This is the doctrine he taught under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. So it's technically God's doctrine. This is God's doctrine here. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and, and patience. Persecutions, verse 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystria. What persecutions I had endured. But notice, but out of them all the Lord, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Notice, you see, you're going to come through persecutions in your life. That's going to happen, whether they be huge savage persecutions like Paul went through or something as simple as someone pouring down beer down your face meanwhile you're trying to street preach you know just mocking you reviling you etc you're going to encounter that my friend but notice what the bible says but out of them all the lord deliver me you see the lord can deliver amen the lord can deliver he can deliver you out of your persecution amen it's just time it's just time if you remember St uh, Stephen, for instance, the Lord delivered. Now, you might say, well, no, Stephen died. Uh, no, he didn't. The Lord delivered him out. He did. He went to heaven. He went to heaven. You think you think when he showed up to heaven, the Lord was like, hey, Stephen, how you doing here? Go go over there. All right, you're good. All right, you made it to heaven. No. Chances are when he went to heaven, he probably received him with open arms and don't worry. I have you. I have you. I just delivered you. I have you. You're fine. You're with me forevermore. You know, you, you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine. But notice the Lord is the one who delivers out of all persecution. Amen. Now you might say, well, I have never seen the Lord work in my life. Well, here's the thing. If you want the Lord to work in your life, you need to go through persecution. Amen. If you want God to pull off a miracle in your life, you need to put yourself in a position that God will need, well, I'm sorry, that you will need a miracle instead of just want one. Amen? Because you can want anything. So you can say, God, I want your will for my life. Well, if you don't put yourself in a position where you need God's will for your life, you ain't going to get it, buddy. You ain't going to get it. You got to suffer for Christ. You got to suffer for him. Notice what the Bible says, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Wow, look at this. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It didn't say those who are in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's not what it said. It said those that live godly in Christ Jesus suffer persecution. You see, the, the condition here is live godly here. Are you living godly? Well, here's, well, notice what the Bible says. Shall. You see this word shall here? It means that it's going to happen. All right. This is guaranteed. Shall. Like this shall come to pass. Well, you see this word here, shall, this is going to happen, buddy. So if you have not suffered persecution, then, sir, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you have not been living godly. Now you might say, well, that's a stretch. Well, you can take it however you want, my friend, but that's what the Bible says. And not only that, but this is to this dispensation, because 2 Timothy was written to the church of God, the body of Christ. All right, so you can either take it or leave it, pal. You can't wiggle your way out of it. The Bible says, and all that live will live God live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. That's what will end up happening. Now, there's levels to this. How often are you living godly? Because let me tell you something. If you live godly 100% of the time, then my friend, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get whipped. <laughs> you're going to you're going to get you're going to get uh, you're going to you're going to get uh, attempts on your life. That's what's going to end up happening. That's if you live godly 100% of your life. You see, the reason, and I'm talking about, you know, street preachers and evangelists, you know, like me. The reason why we don't face the persecution 
that Paul went through is not because we're, we're in a different time. That has nothing to do with it. You have, you know, LGBTQ members, uh, you know, burning, burning buildings and, and and all these movements going on, you know, and people are, are burning and dying and, and you have this going on. And that's no excuse if people are just as violent as they were back then. The only difference is, is that how often are you living godly? You see, it says you shall suffer persecution. But what's the intensity of that persecution? You see, because let me tell you something, if you're living godly 100% of the time and everything that you do, everything, I mean everything, not slacking, not only living godly when you come to church, not only living godly when you're out passing out tracks, not only living godly when you're out street preaching, but living godly in every single little thing in your life. Oh, and let me tell you, my friend, if you do so, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get, not only are people going to come after you, they're going to try to kill you. They're going to try to maim you. They're going to try to whip you. They're going to try to get you arrested. They're going to try to frame you. That's what's going to end up happening. That's if you live godly 100% of the time, that is. Are you willing to go up to that challenge? Are you willing to let the Lord use you and sanctify you? <laughs> I was watching this uh, live stream the other day. I'm not going to say his name, but there's this guy who, who forsook everything forsook his own job to serve the Lord Jesus Christ because his job was doing some stuff that it, it ought not to be doing and he was willing to follow Christ and forsake his job and put I would say his family in jeopardy of, of losing their money to follow the Lord Jesus Christ are you willing to be that way now you might say well in my job place sometimes they do evil practices but that's not going to stop me i still well then you're not living godly you got to stand up for that that's if you stand up for god 100 percent of the time that is it's your choice my friend on how god wants to use you because god wants to use you and sanctify you he wants to bring you and grow you grow you to be conformed to his image not only is that physical not only will you be conformed to his image physically but he wants to conform you to his image spiritually and growing as well amen that's what god wants for you and the choice is are you willing are you willing to live godly 100 percent of the time because if you do my friend you're going to suffer persecution exactly like the apostle paul did exactly like the apostle paul did nothing has changed you think people are more civilized? No, they're more savages than ever. That has not changed. All right. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verse 17 to 18. And we're going to stop here. For our light affliction, notice, for our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. Notice what the Apostle Paul is saying. This affliction, he calls it light affliction. So you telling me, are you telling me that everything that the Apostle Paul just went through, the list in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, that list that he went through, he calls that what? What does he call that? Light affliction. <laughs> You might say, well, that's not light affliction. Again, again, are we going to look at this through how God sees things? Or are we going to look at this through how you see things? There's a difference. There's a difference because I can see that. Well, the Apostle Paul went through and say, man, that's a lot of persecution. But Paul was like, no, that's light. That's light affliction. That's light affliction. <laughs> that's precisely what he's describing it as. Our affliction that we go through. It's light affliction. And it's only for a moment, you know. That's how the, notice how the Apostle Paul is wording this. But notice what he says. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. Now let me ask you something. Do you want a little weight and glory? Or a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory? The choice is yours, my friend. The choice is yours. I already went through that. That's how much you want, how, how much are you willing to suffer for him? You see, because this eternal weight and glory, these rewards, which are crowns, precious stones, jewels, gold, silver, that's not only for you, that's for the Lord Jesus. Because you're going to cast those back at him one day and show of appreci appreciation of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. Amen? 
Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. <laughs> you know what he's basically saying here? Listen, don't stress over the things of this world. Don't stress over gold. Don't stress over silver. Why don't you get yourself some treasure that you can lay up in heaven instead of stressing over what you have in your life? You see, because you can focus so much time on your belongings and the stuff that you should have <laughs> and completely ignore your suffering for Christ. <laughs> you can say, well, well, the preacher said this and I'm upset because of this, blah, 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 blah. And you see, you may be the type of person who at the same time does not suffer for Christ at all. Stop worrying about the things of this life. Stop complaining about minute details. <laughs> Like if you go to like, let's say you stop by in a restaurant to get your order wrong. So what if they get your order wrong? Amen. If they get your order wrong. So maybe that can open up an opportunity for you to live godly in Christ Jesus and suffer, <laughs> suffer to, 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 to receive the wrong plate and still share a gospel tract. Still sh share the gospel. You see, why can you do that instead? Instead of grabbing and complaining all the time. The choice is yours, my friend. It's what the Bible says. No, now, and this is something that should arise because uh, rise of concern because in my life I've never been whipped or nothing like that. So that just shows that I haven't li been living that godly. I haven't. I'll be honest with you. Because if I would truly be living 100% godly, <laughs> I would be suffering the same things as the Apostle Paul went through. So I pray to the Lord that, that he gives me the courage to step up, to step up, on what I can do for the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every single. Our prayers should not be. Lord what can you do for me. But our prayers should be. Lord what can I do for you. How more can I help your ministry. How more can I prosper the kingdom of God. How more can I get other people saved. That should be your prayer. That's if you think like Christ that is. <laughs> Appreciate what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you. Don't. Don't stop remembering what he did for you because that is fuel. What he did for you is fuel for you to suffer for him. <laughs> Amen. All right, then. This is our, our quick study here, our Bible study, our study, study slash sermon here on suffering. <laughs> what it is to suffer for Christ and how Paul did it and so should we. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, this, uh, this little study here. And I'll be catching you guys on the next time. KJB believers, I'll be catching you guys in the next time. Peace.